Rob Lake Michigan Angler here. Today I'm going to give you the breakdown of salmon trolling rods for Lake Michigan. I'm going to talk about the different characteristics uh, that go into the different techniques for trolling for salmon. So I'm going to talk about downrigger rods, planer board rods, dipsy rods, lead core and copper rods, and then wire dipsy rods. So let me get started with downrigger rods. Downrigger rods are typically a lighter, whippier rod than many of the other rods out there. As you can see with this one, the ugly stick, it can really bend it over. Uh, the ugly stick for me is the best selling rod in Lake Michigan Angler for downriggers. And in fact, in the seven, this is a seven footer, that's the most popular length as well. But they are available in different lengths. Um, the reason you want a light rod like this is because you can really bend it over when you set your downrigger and the line in your release. So there's as little line as possible between the rod tip and the downrigger ball. And then when a fish hits, it'll pop up a little bit, of, give you a little bit of a hook set right there. Uh, the reason we like seven footers around here is just that they're easy to handle in the boat. In other places, people do prefer longer rods, just a personal preference. But like I said, around here, seven footers and seven and a halfs are by far the uh, most popular. Um, so, and there's different brands of them. We've got the ugly stick here. This right here is the seven and a half foot uh, Okuma Convector Pro Downer Rod. Again, it's another whippy rod, nice and light. This one has metal guides on it. For uh, downriggers, you can use metal or ceramic guides. We also have the Okuma Classic Pro GLT series. This is a seven and a half. This rod is available anywhere from seven foot to eight and a half foot. The next rod I have here is the Talora. And again, all these rods are, are available in different lengths. I just have the seven footers here because they're easier to display and they are our most popular. This rod has a little more backbone than some of the others. Um, it's a good downrigger rod. It's also good, especially if you're using braid for a deeper downrigger. And being that this one has a little more backbone, it's also good for planer boards as well, especially like surface planer boards, just spring coho rigs, crankbaits, stuff like that. The next rod I have here is the Ugly Stick GX2. And again, this is pretty similar to that uh, Talora. It's a little more backbone. Uh, you can use it for a downrigger, but I prefer actually this for planer boards. Um, it'll handle a little everything. You can put lead core on it if you want, but it does make a better like mono surface planer board rod. Now we're gonna talk about dipsy rods and we're gonna have two different types of dipsy rods here. We've got braid dipsy rods and wire dipsy rods. So we're gonna start with the braid dipsy rods. And for a lot of small boaters, we go with a little bit longer rod so you can deal with the longer leader behind the dipsy. A dipsy rod's gonna be a little heavier than a downrigger rod and a little bit more moderate action. So this is a nine foot dipsy rod right here. Uh, this is the Kuma Classic Pro. You'll see it's going to be a bit heavier than those, quite a bit heavier than those downrigger rods because the dipsies put a lot of pressure on the rod. Um, but it's not a broomstick. There's still some give to it because when a fish hits a dipsy, there's a lot of force on that and that rod needs to be able to absorb that force. So right here we've got the Okuma Classic Pro GLT dipsy rod. Another great option for budget dipsy rods are the uh, Shimano TDRs. These are great rods. Very similar to the to the GLT. And then we have the higher end right here with the Shimano Talora. Uh, very nice rod, a little bit higher quality blank on it and some little bit nicer guides. It's a great rod for dipsies. When choosing the length for uh, braids, is, you know, if you're just set, starting to set up a boat, we usually start off with braid dipsies. Um, but it's often important to keep in mind that down the road you might end up getting braid or wire dipsies as well. And so I like to start everybody off with a nine foot dipsy because when you run a wire and a braid dipsy at the same time, the wire dipsy has to be a shorter rod. So that way, when you go to get that wire dipsy, you can go get an eight footer and it'll fish inside of that braid real easily. And that way you're not stuck buying a wire and a braid down the road because you'll need a longer braid. Um, this right here is actually my favorite wire dipsy rod. This is the Convector Pro series. Um, we've got two different versions of it here. This one has just metal guides with the swivel tip. And what you're gonna notice with a lot of these rods is that they're just a little bit whippier than your regular dipsy rod, your braid dipsy rod, because they just need to have a little more forgiveness with that wire. So again, this is the metal guides with the swivel, swivel tip on it. This is the same rod, but with AFCO roller guides. And this is a very nice rod. This is probably the best one on the market. Quite a bit more money. Um, but just an overall great rod that's gonna last you a long time. So yeah, there's, because you can see there's two different types of wire rods there, just metal guides and then full rollers. The common denominator between these two is a swivel tip. Uh, you can also add a twilly tip to the end of a, a wire rod and that's a little bit less expensive 
option. It's kind of like a door spring on the end of it. Here's another wire rod. This has got a little bit bigger guides on it, rollers. Um, another good option. Overall, when you're picking out your dipsy, just kind of keep that in mind, what you're gonna do. Like, like you, if you have a small boat, the length of the leader is gonna be an issue, so you want a, a longer rod. Bigger boat fishermen often like a shorter, a shorter rod because they have the room and the space for the person fighting the fish to back up. And then it gives them more options for running rods outside of that short dipsy rod. So that's everything you need to know about dipsy and wire dipsy rods. Now let's talk about lead core and copper rods. So when it comes to copper and lead core rods, the main difference you're gonna see between them and other rods is they all have big metal guides on them. Um, the reason for this is so that the line can freely move through them, especially when you're letting the line out. So that way your bigger knots and bigger line doesn't catch on any of the guides and so that the copper doesn't wear through the guide whereas if you have ceramic guides copper will eventually wear through it the typical copper rod is a little bit heavier than again a downrigger rod it's a little bit faster action than uh, a dipsy rod a dipsy rod's more moderate this is going to have more backbone and just a little bit softer tip to it uh, that's to help absorb the shock of waves hitting your planer boards when you run it out uh, this is by far the most popular downrigger rod right here. This is the Okuma Classic Pro GLT. Only comes in eight and a half foot, and uh, it's just in that right price point. It's a reliable rod. It goes for under 50 bucks, and you can't really go wrong with it, especially if you need a whole bunch of them. You can get a good price on them. The next rod here is the Okuma Big Leg Tournament Series. This is a nice rod. It's a little more money. It comes in a variety of lengths. So this is a seven footer right here for the guys that like seven footers. Uh, this particular one's a two piece, where a lot of the other seven footers are one piece. Um, just a nice handle, nice blank to it, just an overall good rod. Uh, it comes in a variety of lengths, 7, 8, and 9 foot. So the next one is the Okuma Convector Pro Series. It's pretty similar to the Big Lake Series. It comes in 7, 8, and 9 foot. Um, has a real nice tip on it, like an ugly stick kind of tip so it doesn't break. Um, again, the big metal guides, overall great rod. And then the high end of them all is the Shimano Talora. So this one, has, again, has the same metal guides. This is a two-piece, eight-foot. It comes in seven, eight, and nine-foot. Uh, again, and then it's got the gimbal, gimbal mount for the rod, the rod handle there. So when you're choosing rods, and you're gonna have multiple rods, you know, running multiple lead cores and coppers on the same side of the boat, um, you can go about it two different ways. The most popular way is just to make sure all the rods, um, all your boards and all your lead cores are just on the same length rod. It just makes it easy to run. The other train of thought, the other technique is guys will run longer rods on the outside boards and shorter rods on the inside boards. Either way is fine, it's just a personal preference. So that's a breakdown of the various rods for trolling for salmon on Lake Michigan for each one of the techniques from downriggers to dipsies. If you learned something, please subscribe. And if you need any of the rods, we have them all in stock right now. You can stop in the store here in Winter Harbor or check out the links below for each one of the rods. Thanks for watching.